Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. Happy Friday. This week has gone by so fast. It's ridiculous. But anyways, I wanted to come on here and share a few stories with y'all. I'm just getting comfortable, child. Get comfortable in my little chair. So if you guys do not know, there's a lot going on right now with gymnast Simone Biles. And what's going down is that basically her mom, it seems like every time Simone got something going on with the Olympics, here comes her mama. Now, for y'all who do not know, Simone Biles was in foster care for several years because her mother and her father, who was a teen father, I think they were both teen parents, um, where they were drug addicted. So they were not there for their children. Simone Biles and her youngest sister and um, two brothers, they ended up in foster care. And the mother's father ended up getting Simone, her little sister, and the two brothers out of foster care and he ended up adopting them now the mom went on to have other children as well um so this whole situation is very crazy it seems like every time simone is in the olympics the daily mail reaches out to her if you guys remember back in 2021 they reached out to her as if you know she has anything to do with simone Biles. so this is the article from 2021 and it says exclusive she's gonna be okay simone's Biles' birth mother says her daughter will land on her feet after the olympic gymnast announced that she was pulling out of the team finale to focus on her mental health first of all simone does not claim this woman she doesn't deal with her. The woman that Simone calls mom is who would technically be her step-grandmother. So I don't understand why the Daily Mail keeps reaching out to this woman. So if you know about Simone Biles, she's spoken a lot about being in foster care and how she was adopted. So we're gonna go ahead and watch this story together really quick. I actually was a foster kid, so I know some of those hardships that those kids go through. When my siblings and I entered foster care, it was because our biological mom was struggling with drug and alcohol abuse. I was three years old. I just remember like us as kids being so hungry and then I just remember this cat that would get fed and not like quite us. And so we were taken and thankfully we actually got to stay in one foster home and we were all together. Simone spent three years in foster care, during which time her grandparents were frequent visitors. And it was like some of the best times ever. We were just so excited. When she was six, they officially adopted her. And this new life soon led six-year-old Simone to discover her passion. Were you on a class field trip? When you went to a gym? What happened there? I never even heard of gymnastics before. I was just like, oh, I bet I could do that. All right, so you guys just saw that clip. So, you know, the fact that her grandparents still stayed in her life, even though the mother was messing up and she was on drugs and not doing what she needed to do, that is what family is about. When one falls, the people who are okay mentally, financially, and spiritually, you step up because kids do not ask to be born. They do not ask to come into this world. So kudos to her grandparents for stepping up and visiting them in foster care, making sure that even though they were in foster care, that they knew who their family was. And kudos to them for eventually adopting Simone Biles and her siblings. So now we're going to go ahead and watch this video of her mother that's going viral all over social media. Whenever she's ready, she's ready, and I'm here. And I want her to be able to come to me and say, you know, okay, let's have a sit down because there's some things I want to know. So I just have to have patience. I want to let her know that I love her. I'm very proud of her, you know, but I'm just still waiting, you know. I would like to sit down and talk to you and answer any questions you may have, you know, because I don't know what you've been told or, but, you know, I want you to hear the real deal. I was an addict. I will always be an addict, but there's just a way that you have to learn how to stay away from people, places, and things, and change your routine, and just change your life. Live your best life. <laughs> you know, if I need to know anything, I'll call my dad, hey dad, what's going on with Simone? How's everybody doing? You know, it keeps me posted. So you don't have like a direct number that you can even reach out to her? I do, but I won't. Why not? You know, I'm just, I want her to reach out to me. 
You know, she's 27 now. She's married. I would like to have been a part of that, but I just, I just have to wait for her. Whenever she's ready, she's ready, and I'm here. And I want her to be able to come to me and say, you know, okay, let's have a sit down because there's some things I want to know. So I just have to have patience. I want to let her know that I love her. I'm very proud of her. You know, but I'm just still waiting, you know. I would like to sit down and talk to you and answer any questions you may have. You know, because I don't know what you've been told or, but, you know, I want you to hear the real deal. So you guys just heard from Simone Biles' biological mother. Her name is Shannon Biles. And so um, Simone's grandfather is Shannon's father. So she was saying she reaches out to her dad to get updates about Simone, but that Simone still hasn't reached out to her. You can tell that she's low-key hurt, but I do like the fact that she is respecting Simone's space and that she's respecting the fact that Simone is not ready to reach out to her. Um, but now Simone Biles' sister, and this is not the one that she grew up with in the same home um, of the grandparents. That's a different sister. This is an older sister, I believe, Micah. And she's coming out and she's basically going off on the internet because a lot of the internet is saying, leave Simone Biles alone. You know, why is her mother doing this? Every time the Olympics come around, here comes Shannon. So Mika is coming out to defend Shannon. So we're going to go ahead and watch this video right here. Okay. Hi, guys. My name is Micah. I'm going to come on here because I just want to say this really quickly. Um, Because that video of my mom came out and she sent it to me. But um, I just want to let y'all know, I didn't even watch the full video. I really don't care about too much about the video. All I know is what I'm seeing on the internet. And what I do want to, I want to come to this internet and defend my mom because she might not be everything that we expected for her to be. But at the end of the day, she's still a, she's still a work in progress. And we give her that. Um, Simone chose not to have a relationship with my mom, which is fine. That was her choice. Me, personally, I didn't develop a relationship until my, with my mom until I was 17 years old. Um, it started when I was about nine. It was on and off because um, she was still dealing with what she was dealing with at the time. But I'm not going to let y'all get on this Internet and try to bash my mom or say anything bad or anything of that sort because she's not a bad person. She's done nothing to Simone. She's she life happened to her. And that's OK. I'm not mad at her. I'm, I understand. Everybody deals with their my mom has eight children. There's Ashley, Tevin, Simone, Adrian, me, Mariah, Shania, Tehran and Shania from number one all the way down to number eight. Simone has. Two full blood siblings, and everybody else is half bloody. Ashley has her own dad. Simone, Seven, and Adria have their dad. And then me and my last, the last three, me, Mariah, Serena, and I have our dad. But I just want to get on this internet and say that I, I don't want nobody bashing my mom. Because at the end of the day, life happens to everybody. Um, things happen. Um, but at the end of the day, she was in good hands. She was taken care of. Sooner rather than later. At, at, and that's what I don't like about the story that's being told or the story that's trying to be written or the story that's trying to be portrayed. Because at the end of the day, she was good. From two years old and up. Okay, my thing is this. First of all, you don't control the internet. Your mom keeps running to the Daily Mail. Every time the Daily Mail rings, your mom answers and she sits down and she does the interview. If y'all are not feeding the media, then there's nothing for the internet to say about your mother. But since your mother wants to keep talking publicly, the internet is gonna have an opinion. Now granted, Simone did have a decent life in spite the fact, but it could have also went the other way, okay? Simone could have been left in foster care. She could have been abused. Thank goodness she wasn't, but for you to say that, you know, well, Simone was well taken care of, she was only in foster care for a short amount of time, that doesn't negate the fact that your mother, you know what I'm saying, was not there for her. She was not a mother to Simone, and also she kept having children. If you couldn't take care of the first few, why keep having child after child after child? These are real questions that people are asking, and they're real questions that people have about your mother's behavior. She was good. She was good, whether it be with my mom or not. And 
I'm not gonna speak for Simone and how she can feel or whatever the case may be because I everybody each and every one out of eight of us deal with our own feelings about the situation but don't get on this internet doing too much with my mom because she tried and if Simone doesn't want that relationship, she's not going to push her for that relationship until she wants it. Like she said, whenever she's ready, she's ready. But on the same coin, it's not like my mom was not trying to be there. That's the part that y'all not that y'all aren't getting. It's not like, you know what I'm saying, she's dealing with what she was dealing with. So how could she be there? She Like I said, back when I was nine, and I'm, mind you, I'm younger than Simone. Um, by three years, I'm younger than Simone. So, she was dealing with what she was dealing with. And everybody dealing with it how they dealing with it. And that's okay. Ain't nobody mad at her. We, she, I have my own problems with Simone, but I'm not going to get on this internet and do too much on that. Because I already tried, and y'all tried to fake ass bash me for that. So, I'm not going to do that. Because y'all trying to make it seem like, oh, I'm just jealous or whatever. But at the end of the day, I just wanted my sister. So, it is what it is. So that's the real tea. The reason why she's on this internet talking is because she has her own issues with Simone. And I think part of it is Simone wasn't raised with her. Simone was raised with her siblings that she has a biological connection with where they had the same mom and dad. This baby came three years after Simone and them. So Simone probably really doesn't know her like that and have a bond with her like that, you know? And so you can tell that's where some of the animosity comes from. And I don't blame Simone for kind of being standoffish. This is what happens when people are drug addicted. They keep having children and the children don't have a bond. They don't have a connection to their siblings because they're being raised by different people in different circumstances and they build different relationships. So I think that's really where the hurt is coming from is the fact that this sister does not have a bond with Simone. It is, but all I'm asking is not too much on my mom. Thank you. So like I said, I think where the problem comes in is that Simone is not close to that particular sister. I never even knew about this sister. I know about Adria Biles, um, who was also a gymnast. Her and Simone are very close. They do TikToks together. So it's not like Simone is acting funny or acting brand new towards her family. She deals with the people that she was raised around. She wasn't raised around these other siblings that came after her. And you can't be mad at Simone for that. So for y'all who don't know, this is the sister here. I'm gonna show you guys a video of Adria. This is the one that Simone is the closest to. Did you know Simone Biles is sister, Adria Biles. Adria was also once a gymnast, and Simone is eager to see her return to the sport. When Simone was three years old, her biological mother, unable to care for her due to alcoholism, had to place her and her infant sister, Adria, into foster care. Simone and Adria were very fortunate to discover their gymnastics talents at a young age. Adria began practicing gymnastics at the age of nine and continued until she announced her retirement in 2016. Okay, so there goes a snippet of Adria Biles. So this whole situation, it is really sad and it's very complicated because you're dealing with family. I think, you know, the mom has, you know, I think the mom does miss Simone and I'm sure she has good intentions, but her going to the media, that's not going to want to make Simone really deal with her because I'm sure Simone gets pulled in a million different directions because she's a huge international superstar. She's an international gymnast and I'm sure she does not want to deal with the baggage that her mom brings with her. Not only her drug addiction, but all these other siblings that she doesn't know who probably had their hand out and expect Simone to take care of them. You you know, and people are saying that Simone um, is being selfish by not reaching out to her mom. Her mom gave birth to her. But I notice people don't have that same energy when you have children who don't want to deal with their deadbeat dads. If this was a deadbeat dad who chose drugs over his children and was having all types of kids all over the place, nobody would be trying to force this relationship. But because it's a woman, everybody's supposed to look past everything and you're supposed to forgive her because she gave birth to you. Well, that's not necessarily how that works. I see Simone's relationship with her grandparents, who she calls her parents, as being such a sweet, sincere relationship. The fact that these people people took in four other children, right? 
At this point, Simone's grandfather was done raising his children. His children were grown, he was done, but he still, him and his wife found it in their heart to take on four more children, raise them, you know what I'm saying, provide them a good life, and then put them in gymnastics. And if you guys know anything about sports, especially gymnastics, it is not cheap, okay? It is a very, very expensive sport. And they had no idea that Simone was going to win the genetic lottery and not be taller than four foot eight and be this superstar gymnast. No, they put her in there. She could do a few flips, but they never thought she was going to be this huge, you know, international star. But they still poured into her. This is why I say it doesn't matter who births you, meaning mom or dad. It's about who spends time with you, who nourishes you, who, you know, who is there for you. Time is more important than money. That's the same thing I say about Nick Cannon. He can have all the kids he wants to in the world. Yes, he has the money, but time is really what children want. They really want to look up in the stands and see their parent there. And when you're an absentee parent, be it because of your own choice or be it because you got, you know, into drugs and alcohol, these are some of the consequences. You may have some children like Mika who want to sit there and support you and, and be there for you and have a relationship with you. Or you may have children like Simone who are like, you know what, these are my real parents. These are who took care of me from the time I was three years old. I don't want a relationship with my biological mother because Nellie Biles, who is her grandmother, is Simone Biles' mother to her. She calls them mother and father. And I think the mom just needs to respect that. And I think for the most part, the mom is respecting that, but her talking to the media is just not a good look. And I think the sister, the sister's input wasn't really needed because again, you don't control the internet. The internet is gonna have an opinion of your mom regardless if you like it or not, because she keeps bringing stuff to, you know, to the media. So the internet is gonna have an opinion. So there's nothing the sister can do about that, but I really feel like the sister feels a way because her and Simone Biles are not close. She's not able to, you know, stand adjacent to Simone Biles' greatness like Simone Biles' other sister, and I think that that bothers her. And again, Simone Biles doesn't owe any of these other siblings anything. I remember a few years ago when one of her siblings was arrested and charged with murder, and people kept trying to pin that on Simone, like, oh, look at her brother. What does that have to do with Simone? Simone is out here being a gymnast, living her best life. Like Last time I checked, she doesn't have a criminal record. So I can understand why she stays away from certain family members and she doesn't want to be attached to any of their foolishness or ratchetness. I definitely get it. I don't think Simone Biles owes her mom anything. She's the child in this situation, okay? So if she feels the need to reach out to her mother, she will. And if she feels the need not to, that is her business. I don't think people should knock Simone because of that. So now in other news, child, we got to talk about this whole situation that went down yesterday with Carisha and Joe Budden. This situation is a hot damn mess. Carisha tried to have jokes on Joe Budden and the jokes basically blew up in her face. So we're going to go ahead and check out what went down yesterday on Twitter. So what basically happened um, is that Joe Budden finally went gold after like 80 years. It's been 84 years. Um, for his song, Pump It Up. And so Carisha had jokes. So I'm gonna go ahead and play you guys a video of Joe Budden receiving his gold plaque for the song, Pump It Up. And I'm gonna read to you guys what Carisha had to say. So this is the video here. All right, leave this here. <laughs> so uh, Say Cheese had posted this. They said, Joe Budden's hit record, Pump It Up, is officially certified gold. It was released in 2003. So Carisha had a bunch of laughing face emojis. So Joe Budden responded back to her and Joe Budden says, it would be too easy. And then somebody tells Joe Budden, don't do it. Then Carisha says, another one bites the dust, remember? You were just celebrating when you thought I took an L. I can laugh at you. You was just laughing at me, so let's laugh. And this is the video that Carisha is talking about. You in one of those again? Yeah, she doesn't drop me a lot as frequently. Don't put on another one bites the dust. Do 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 do. Another one bites the dust, and another one down, and another one down, another one bites the dust. I love when a two-time award winner. Oh yeah. I love when they just. It's over now. You know when there's a glitch in the matrix. Sure. It was a little fishy. Sure. Seven you, is, yeah. yeah. And another one down, and another <laughs> one down. <laughs> so then somebody replied back and they posted a picture of Young Miami and Joe Budden. And it says, Young Miami has 195,000 monthly listeners and Joe Budden has 781,000 listeners. And the person writes respectfully. 
And so then Karisha responds back. She's like, shrug emoji. Then she goes on to say, I was nine, I'm 30 now. Somebody else says, Reesh with crying emojis. And then this other guy says, you can't even release music, so what the fuck you laughing for, ho? Then Karisha replies back and she says, bitch, cause I can laugh, ho. And then somebody tells Joe Budden, they say, do it, Joe. And Joe says, maybe tomorrow, LOL. And then Karisha says, I'm beefing with a whole bunch of black men. This is sad, protect black women. Now that's the bullshit I can't stand. First and foremost, Joe Budden was minding his business, okay? He was celebrating a win. You decided to put him on blast. You thought it was funny that he was just not getting a plaque. After 84 years, you thought it was funny. And then as soon as you got backlash, now you want to say protect black women. No, you don't get to drag black women into your fuck shit. You can be out there windmilling and swinging by your damn self. This has nothing to do with black women. You know, you're so quick to holler about protecting black women. But what about all the black women that you're popping? has disrespected while you sat by quietly. I haven't heard Carisha one time say anything about any of these black women who have levied allegations against Diddy. I haven't heard her come out and say anything about the Cassie video, even to denounce it, even to say, wow, that's messed up. That's sad that a woman would go through something like that. So it's funny how she wants protection for some shit that she started, okay? Because like I said, Joe was minding his business. She wants protection for some shit that she started and we're supposed to come running with capes, no sis. You're gonna have to hold your own tits on this one, okay? So now, of course, with this whole back and forth with Joe Budden and Carisha, of course DJ Academics has something to say. We all know DJ Academics cannot stand Carisha. So we're gonna go ahead and watch this clip of what he has to say to her. Check this out. Here's here's a reality, and I know Joe is gonna, Joe's gonna issue a read, but that's my man. So I, I'll give you a, I'll give you, I felt like I've given you so many lashings before. This will just be one of the same, but I just want to remind you of this, right? Your music career was never compared to Joe Button. Number one, um, you are caribou. You see, the reason why you can't speak to somebody like Joe Button is because whether he wrote a song, which is almost like a pop song now, it's a very popular hip hop song, Pump It Up, or he wrote any of them other songs he wrote. They all came from his pen, his mind, he owns the publisher. Young Miami, you can't name five lyrics that you done wrote, and that's the problem. You gotta stop cosplaying as you're an, a, 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 a outstanding artist because you're nothing but a ventriloquist. And that's the, that's the problem where people like Joe Budden has always been frustrated. I didn't get his frustration when I first lined up with him on Everyday Struggle because part of his frustration was with people like you because people like him, for him to come up with some brilliant lyrics, really genius shit, double entendres and triple entendres and all these complex and multis and all this type of stuff. He had to really think pen and paper, Blackberry, iPhone. He's really trying to lock in. All you had to do was show up and say, where's my rhymes? Now, I'm not going to knock everybody who uses a ghostwriter uses help. But you're the same person who also disrespected your label before and they're the one who gave you the ghostwriter. Remember the reason why Yachty don't roll for y'all no more? You want to tell people? I'll tell people. You don't want to talk about that. Why don't Yachty wrote, write for y'all no more? You tell me. But you won't say it. You can't. It, it's, it's disingenuous to see an artist that don't write, that is non-talented, that could barely recite. And by the way, don't let nobody and Young Miami, you know I spoke directly to your situation. The reason why you addressing everybody, neighborhood talk, Joe Bunn and not me, is because you know I talk to, ex you know exactly who I talk to at this point. You don't want to say it. You don't want them tapes out of you not being able to perform the record. You not being able to record. You sound remedial. You should never mention a real rapper in, in your mouth. You're just not that talented. The whole point with somebody like you is that when given and gifted a career is that you've just never had the opportunity, like you've just never had the passion to just to say, I'm going to just give a little bit more than average. And that's the problem. So when you talk about Joe Budden, I don't care if he went one time platinum, gold, maybe only sold 300,000 records. You're not an artist. You're not an artist. You're an actor. You're a script reader. You've never written anything solid. I challenge Carisha to show us her 
crafting any record she doesn't write. You heard what Cat Williams says he does. I'm sorry, but he's not saying anything that's not true. JT was the writer. Little Yachty wrote for them on a few songs. You know what I'm saying? Carisha is basically just regurgitating what she's told to regurgitate. She's told to just memorize rhymes and get out there and look pretty. And so it is pretty insulting when somebody who does not write, who can barely, you, you can barely understand what she's saying when she raps, gets up there and I'm no big Joe Budden fan at all. But at the end of the day, he is a talented rapper, okay? He's always had skills in the booth. He may have not have went far with his rap career, but Joe Budden can definitely spit. So I do find it very interesting that Carisha thinks that, you know, she has one up on him. And for her to get mad and say, well, he made fun of me. No, he was doing commentary, the same thing that you're doing now. Like I always say, it's funny how all these celebrities want to get into the podcast game. They want to give their opinion on stuff until somebody has an opinion about them and then all of a sudden they're crying tattoo tears all of a sudden you're not allowed to have an opinion of them when you're trending when they're talking about your music it's called commentary you, you can't get mad because Joe Budden has an opinion about your music about your album sales that is his job his job is to critique hip-hop culture the same thing you're doing on Carisha please you have an opinion about everything under the sun so you can't then get in your feelings when people have an opinion about you what you got to get over is that I don't think anybody say your podcast was ever trash they just said that you didn't do it enough you were still trying to parade as an artist but it wasn't really praying as an artist because you weren't dropping mad music anyway you're just lazy you rather lay on your back take some dick suck some cock get peed on but you don't want to actually put in put in the work to write a record or even put in work to, to do the podcast the people you're talking about and i agree with joe if you win an award at the bt hip-hop award um 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 um, th th that fucking clown show of media platforms that they give awards to. If you win an award for a media platform and you barely do your podcast, you got six episodes, you got motherfuckers like Joe Budden who does two to three episodes a week. I'm over here streaming eight hours multiple times a week. Everybody is putting their work into their last drop of sweat and blood. You're unpassionate you uh, i don't even know if that's a word you you lack the passion that is needed for anybody to creature what you can't do is you can't get nobody to commit millions to you unless you're sucking their dick like diddy that's the problem honey yeah he went there you know again this is the same girl who bragged about being a whore and I'm really a whore. Like, I'm a, like, with a, with a W. Like, I'm a whore. Bragged about getting peed on by P. Diddy. Golden showers, meaning when the guy pees on you, mm -hmm. pee on you everywhere. You like it? I just like it. Okay, so I don't feel bad for her. Every time she's trending for something, it's always some fuck shit that she bought on herself. So, oh well. But please don't drag us black women into your fuckery. You know what I'm saying? That is between you, Joe Button, and DJ Academics. Um, Any other time, we're broke, we're dusty, we're jealous. So we're going to mind our broke, dusty, jealous business over here while you sit there and windmill and fight these men and go back and forth over some stuff that you started. Meanwhile, JT's out here winning, doing her thing. People are really fucking with JT's music and your career is going nowhere. So anyhow, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know your thoughts on both of these stories. One concerning Simone Biles and her mom coming out and her sister also coming out and stating her piece. How do y'all feel about that situation? And then last but not least, how do y'all feel about the drama concerning Carisha and Joe Budden and of course DJ Academics jumping into it? How do y'all feel about that? And do you feel like Carisha has a right to try and say protect all black women when she never uses her platform to better black women? She doesn't use her platform to denounce the things that Diddy has done to black women. Um, she just basically uses her platform for her own grievances and her own situations and for her friends. But yet and still, when she gets into some heat, she wants black women to come running. Um, I'll pass. Anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. I look forward to reading y'all's comments. Comments. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will talk to y'all later. Have a great weekend. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.